Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com. Welcome back to another sound design tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this Blade Runner inspired synth lead completely from scratch. So hopefully you enjoyed that little recreation I made of the original Blade Runner theme uh, by Vangelis. Um, I'm also going to be showing you a few tips if you want kind of a more modern sound, um, kind of like the new Blade Runner film as well. Um, but the, you know, the styles are quite similar and the new film is definitely um, inspired by the old one. Um, so we're going to definitely uh, create this completely from scratch. Um, we're going to be using Yuhi Diva for this, but don't worry if you don't have this synth. Um, you can use pretty much any synth to create the sound, but I would recommend any sort of analog emulation, mainly because the original sound by Vangelis was created using the Yamaha CS80, uh, which is now quite a rare synth, unfortunately, so it's hard to get your hands on. Um, but we can definitely create something similar, as you heard, with just software. Um, so, like I said, we're going to be making this from scratch. Um, we just have an instance of Diva up in here, um, just kind of initialized. Um, just before we quickly get into that, um, I'll just mention I've recently finally made uh, social media for SynthHacker. Um, so if you want to check that out, um, I'm going to be posting like tips and tricks, uh, tutorials in progress, um, stuff like that. And, you know, just to stay up to date with what I'm up to, uh, you can find me on Twitter at TomSynthHacker. Uh, Instagram at SynthHacker and also Facebook.com forward slash SynthHacker as well. I finally actually uh, set a social media up for this stuff. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start making uh, this sound then. So we just have this initialized patch. Um, for the sound, uh, we're using Diva, like I said, and also some external effects, which I'm going to go over as well. Um, we are actually only using um, oscillator 2 and 3 for the sound. So I'm going to turn the volume of 1 down and these up. Um, and just before diving into the oscillator section as well, make sure that you have the synth set to mono. Um, and also, we're going to add a little bit of vibrato to the sound right from the start. Uh, the best way to kind of dial in the amount of vibrato you want and the rate is to turn the vibrato way up. So you can hear that's quite an extreme effect. Uh, and then because it's quite extreme, you can then um, very clearly hear the rate of the vibrato. So you can change it to kind of something that you like. I like it set around there, maybe a little bit slower actually. And then you can just dial it back so it's a little bit more of a subtle effect really. Cool. So you might have heard on the lead at the start, it almost sounds like there's a phaser effect on the lead. Um, but there is actually no phaser effect on there. Um, the way I achieved the sound and the way I'm assuming the original sound achieved this as well was just by slightly detuning the two saw wave oscillators uh, from one another. So if I move this just by like two cents or something like that, and the same for this, but the opposite direction, when I press a note now, you'll hear like this phase in between the oscillators, which is really cool. Really, really nice effect, especially when we start adding like the uh, filter envelopes and stuff like that. 
Um, so yeah, let's move on to the filter section then. Um, I mean, you could use a filter envelope, as I just said, but what I actually did uh, for the sound that you heard at the start was actually, as you can tell by all this crazy modulation, um, I actually used a mod wheel on the cutoff. I didn't actually draw all that in by hand. That would have taken forever. Um, but yeah, what you can do, if you have a MIDI controller with a mod wheel, um, you can map your mod wheel to the cutoff um, in any synth, really. Um, and what this will allow you to do is record manual automation, which especially for a sound like this, um, where it's, it's quite soundtracky, very expressive, um, adding that human element of just manual automation recording is really huge. And I actually played in that lead that you heard um, in a few different parts, and I played the notes in while changing the mod wheel as well, which allows you to be even more expressive. Um, but even if you don't do that and you draw the notes in, you can still um, separately record the automation of the mod wheel, which I highly recommend. Um, but if you don't, if you don't have a, a MIDI keyboard or whatever, or you, you're not bothered about doing like mod wheel automation, um, what you could do to achieve a similar sound um, is just set up an envelope. So right now we just have this. If I bring the cutoff frequency down of the filter, it's gonna cut off a lot of the high frequencies. But if we set up envelope two here with a kind of slow attack and a little bit of release and decay, when I press a note, the filter's gonna slowly open up. Just increase the amplitude attack a little bit. So that's a way to achieve a similar sort of sound if you don't want to set up the mud wheel. Um, and it still sounds pretty cool to me, so yeah. Um, but we're just gonna stick with uh, the mod wheel um, for now. So I'm gonna move all these envelope parameters down. We're just gonna boost the cutoff a bit for now so we can hear what we're doing. Um, and just in case you, you're an Ableton user and you don't know how to map MIDI to uh, controls, all you need to do is press Control M or Command M, I believe on Mac. Click the parameter you wanna modulate with the mod wheel and then move the MIDI controller. So moving on then, uh, oh, one second. Uh, make sure that you have the filter set to clean, by the way, if you're using Diva, um, if you want the exact same sound. I don't think it makes too much of a difference, but that's just what I kind of um, had it set to. Yeah, it's quite a subtle difference, but yeah. Um, so moving on to the amplitude envelope, um, I just had a bit of slow attack. Um, the sustain was quite far down, um, and then just a high decay and release. So if I press the note now and then let go fairly quickly, quickly you'll hear it takes a very long time for the sound to kind of die away. So I've let go. And it's still the sounds like still dying, um, dying away. Um, and the reason that th that's cool in this context is because the track's really slow. Um, there's a lot of space between notes, so it just kind of stops um, the track getting boring because there's always something moving in and out, which is really cool. And again, adds to like the expressiveness. Um, if you're going to be holding notes that are a lot longer, you might want to increase the sustain. Um, or if you're using this lead in a context where the notes are going to be closer together, you might want to reduce like the decay and release and stuff like that. Uh, moving on finally to the effects in Diva, I just used a bit of chorus to thicken up the sound. Um, so with it full wet, you can hear it's quite an obvious effect. If we dial it back, it's a much kind of more subtle effect, which I personally like, uh, like thickening up the sound. Um, but really, it's just personal preference of how much you put this on. Really, really, really nice. Um, so next, let's move on to our effects section. The first thing I did was actually cut a lot of the lows. Um, a lot of the time, you know, this wouldn't be a great idea. Um, you don't really want to high pass absolutely everything in your mix. Um, however, in the context of this track, because I added like the low end wind and rumble, like the cinematic effects, and there was also a bass layer, um, plus the original lead in the original Vangelis track sounded quite thin as well. Um, just high passing it, you know, kind of makes it a little bit more floaty. And then without. with you know it just adds it kind of um, just makes it a little bit more floaty like I said and a little bit thinner but that's complete personal preference really uh, next I just added a little bit of decapitator just a bit of um, saturation um, I'll just show you what this sounds like and then without 
And because I really wanted this element to kind of stand out of the mix, um, a little bit of saturation goes a long way to help do that. You don't want to go too crazy with it because you end up having to do too much EQ later on to kind of tame it back and it can lead to mixes sounding too bright if you use too much saturation on stuff. Um, but just a little bit on an element like this that you really want to stick out. Um, really great for just um, filling up frequencies and making it stick out the mix more. Um, if you don't have Decapitator, I'm sure whatever DAW you're using has some kind of uh, saturation you can use. But I personally really like uh, Sound Toys Decapitator. Next, just a little bit of subtle um, EQ. Um, just rolling off some of the highs to take away some of the, the harshness of the sound. Um, a little bit of boosting, uh, just above 2000 hertz. Um, and then a few cuts um, in places that I thought needed it. And again, just making sure the lows are rolled off there. Um, and then finally, pretty much what makes most of the sound is the reverb. Um, this is so, so important for soundtrack stuff as well. Um, especially a film like Blade Runner, which is a big scale sci-fi film. Um, you really want the audio to match the visuals, especially on shots where it's like over big cities um, and stuff like that. You want the, the audio to match the visuals visuals and the best way to do this is um, just to think about the scale of what you're writing to and especially when the scale of something like Blade Runner is so big a big size reverb with a long decay with a high uh, wet amount um, really works so I'll just show you what this sounds like Really, really nice. And obviously, usually on a lead sound, you wouldn't have um, like this much um, reverb, especially you'd have way, way less. But again, because of the context of the, the uh, track that this lead is being used in, um, it's really it was really important to kind of push the lead back and to create this kind of massive sense of, of scale, which really works. If you want to use this lead in, say, like a, just an EDM track or whatever it is you, you produce, um, you might want to consider, unless it's in a breakdown or something like that, then a lot of reverb can work. Um, but if you do really want this lead to cut through a little bit more, you could reduce the mix amount. And you can still hear like the subtle reverb in the background, which is really nice. So it's complete personal preference, really. Um, finally, I'll just show you a trick to kind of modernize the sound a little bit. Um, if you kind of want it to sound more like something from the new Blade Runner film, um, what you can do is actually just stack the voices within the synth. So if I set this to three voices, this is kind of similar to what you would do in Serum when you stack the voices of Unison in an, in an oscillator. Um, and you can hear that this just creates a much kind of thicker sound. Really, really nice. And personally, I, I really, really like that. Um, but the, the only thing I found with that was um, it kind of didn't sound like the original Vangelis track too much. It sounded like something a bit more modern. Uh, but yeah, that option's there if you um, kind of want to use that. Uh, but yeah, that pretty much covers the sound, guys. Hopefully um, you learned a thing or two from this video. I had a lot of fun making this. I love making cinematic stuff, and I really, really enjoyed the new Blade Runner film as well. So um, it was just kind of perfect timing. Um, I've also been using Diva for a while, so um, it was nice to finally kind of do a tutorial using one of my favorite soft synths as well. Um, definitely expect more Diva tutorials in the future. Um, I know that uh, Stranger Things is coming out soon, so uh, yeah. Um, maybe a tutorial could be in the works for that. Um, and yeah, if, again, if you haven't done so already, uh, go ahead and check out my social media over at Twitter. I'm at Tom Synthacker, Instagram at Synthacker, and also facebook.com forward slash Synthacker. Thacker. I'm going to be posting tons of like tips and tricks, tutorials in progress and just what I'm up to and stuff like that. So come say hi. Um, and yeah, if you want to check out my presets and samples um, for the synths that I do tutorials in um, and I also get all the presets from my tutorials and stuff like that, check out um, my stuff over at synthacker.com. Uh, but other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.